One of the new features added to Unity 5.5 was the collaboration service. And if we go ahead and take a look, we have a little button up here for it. And notice the gray check mark means that it's not part of the collaboration system. But if you go ahead and click it, open it up, you can just simply click Start Now. And it's going to go ahead and open up the Services tab. Then, of course, you can just go ahead and select an organization that you want to use. Hit the Create button. And you get a list of all the different services. So we can go ahead and turn Collaborate on. And there's a simple toggle for it. So we'll go ahead and we'll flip that. That's going to go ahead and activate my Collaborate. And then we have a few options. The first thing you have to do before anyone else can join your collaboration is to go ahead and publish it. And there's a couple of ways to do it. If you're very starting, if you're just starting off, you can go ahead, hit the open publication toolbar, hit publish now. You also have the option to take a look at the history. So if we click that, it's going to open up a new panel here for the collaboration history. Uh, right now we have absolutely nothing going on. It's going ahead and telling me to go ahead and make some commits. And we can also go to the dashboard on the website to do a bit of uh, work there as well. I'll go ahead and we'll take a look at that a little bit later on. Let's go ahead and start off by publishing something. So you have a chance to add some sort of comment to this. Well, I'm going to use the word push. Uh, this is based on Git. It's not Git. You can use it in tandem with Git, but it's definitely better than trying to use something like Dropbox or something. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to say, I don't know, initial commit. I'm going to go ahead and hit publish now. It's going to take all of the things that I have in my, my scene, my project, all the different scenes I have. It's going to go ahead and push them up. And when it's done, you get the little check mark. And then we have a couple options here. So we can go ahead and view that history again. And we can drop this down and notice that there were 16 asset changes. Again, we have the option to go to the dashboard. I want to save that uh, a little bit later. There's a lot of options to go to the dashboard. Now it's going to be jumping back and forth. Uh, but the second tab down here allows you to invite a teammate. So again, there's other things you can do here. You want to make sure that you have the age restriction set up. This is targeting people uh, under the age of 13. Uh, you do have some settings to go here, reset the name, your company, and everything else. But for right here, if you have someone's email, you can go ahead and enter it, hit invite. They're going to receive an email saying that they've been invited to a project. And then when they open up Unity, they're going to see that they have the ability to access some cloud project. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look at that interface right now. So here we go. I've gone ahead with one of my other accounts and invited this one here to a project. And if we click on in the cloud, uh, we see all the ones that I'm currently a part of as far as being the cloud build and the one that I've been invited to. So you can go ahead, download the project in its current state off of the cloud, and then go ahead, just jump straight in, see what's going on, start making your own changes, publishing them. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these ones that's already started. So I'm going to go back to on disk and the car dev game. That's the one we're making on Discord over collaboration with people I've never met before. <laughs> and I think we pretty much span all four corners of the earth. So here we are in a project that's already part of a collaboration with people. If we go ahead and take a look at the members, I think we have five working on this one. Let's go ahead and take a look. So yes, we have multiple people actually working on this project. Now let's go ahead and actually take a look at the collab button up here. You notice we have the little orange with the arrow pointing down. That means someone's made some modifications since the last time I've made a essentially a pull. And there's a few things we can do here. Uh, we get the message that they put down, but before we accept it, we can go ahead and click on the history and take a look here. So there's 205 asset changes. Uh, I can click on the update just to go ahead and grab it. I can configure now, which will go to the website. And again, we'll look at that a little bit later. Like I said, there's a ton of things that you can go to the website to do. But if we go ahead and use the drop down, we can't see all of them. You can go to the dashboard, which again is the website. Uh, to see more, but you get an idea. It looks like he added a bunch of assets. So before I go ahead and hit the commit, I am going to go take a look at the, the website. Now on some things that when they get changed, not necessarily when they're added, but when they're changed, you get the option to have some sort of comparing the difference, depending on the, the tools you have installed on your machine. Now I know I've got one with Xcode. I think it's like file diff or something like that. So it'll go ahead and load up the file show the version that I currently have in my project versus the, the version that he's sending to me. Then I can go ahead and decide, uh, do, do I want to keep his? Do I want to keep mine? Maybe I just want to go ahead and take mine, make some edits. Maybe there are certain things that he added. 
that I want in mind so we don't have that sort of merge conflict. And the collab service is new, so there's a still a lot of features to be flushed out. Like I said, right now this is better than using a Dropbox folder, but still not as good as using something like uh, SVN or just Git in general. Now, I've already actually looked at all this, so I know I want to go ahead and start it. So I'm going to start updating now because it's, uh, I think it was 200 and something uh, megabytes. Oh no, it's only 129 megabytes. Maybe he went ahead and deleted some stuff. But anyway, while well, it's doing its thing here, I'm going to go ahead and let's go look at that website. So if we click configure now, it's going to open you up in the overview for your project. And you can go ahead and take a look at you know what services are enabled, pe people that are in there. I guess we'll have to blur out those emails. And settings you have. So you can also go ahead and change the name, change ownership. But none of this is new. What we really want to look at is the Collaborate dashboard. Now, if you click on one of those dashboard links, this is where it's going to bring you. And I'm actually going to start off at the timeline instead of the assets. And here's where you get a chance to see all the things that have changed. So this was the last one. It came from Cool Guy. And we scroll down and it looks like he added the standard assets package. The environment one. Yeah, and it looks like he's just added the whole package. So we might have to go through and clean that up. But that's okay, so nothing changed, nothing updated, no. So all he did was just add the, the, one, the one package. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Underneath, that was me. Uh, again, I added a few things. I updated a few things as well. So the, the other people in the project, if they already have, let's say, the rotate script, they all have the, the option to be able to take a look to see you know, which one I want, which one I don't want. And if we take a look here, I have some that are archived. And I've been doing that just to save space. We're just starting off, so we have a ton of little changes happening. Mostly just people importing assets that they want to use for their level. So I've been archiving it along the way. We'll take a look at it when we hit the Manage Storage. But anyway, let's go to the Assets tab, and it just allows you to go ahead and open up the project. Now, this is the, the latest version of the project. Even if you haven't downloaded it into your computer, this is what, the, what you will be downloading. So, of course, we can come in, go to Prefabs. You know, landscapes. Oh, nothing in that one. Let's go to power ups. And there we go. There's all the stuff that's in the power up. Apparently, we can't scroll. Oh, there we go. It's down here. Well, apparently, we're getting a, a website glitch here. <laughs> anyway, so we'll go over to manage storage next. And this is where you have all of your, your pushes, as I'm calling. Of course, you can't see my air quotes, but they're there. Trust me. And like I said, I've been archiving. Now, it says it can take up to six hours to uh, unarchive. So it is technically still there if you need it. Right now, I believe everyone gets 15 gigs. I know the plan was to give pro users, at least the last I heard, was 15 gigs if you have a pro license. I think it was 10 gigs if you have a plus license and five gigs if you have uh, the free version. And in the video I was watching when Unity was talking about this, they talked about how you could combine them. So if two pro users combined, you would have 30 gigs storage. But I'm not exactly sure how that works because it just sounds like you go out and get a bunch of free accounts add them in and just have infinite storage. So I'm sure there's gotta be some sort of cap or some, something in there to stop you from doing that. But anyway, you can see the total size of your project. And like I said, you can archive, not archive. You know, I guess you could think of these as backups, but again, still no replacement for a real, you know, Git server. And of course we have support, which basically allows you to open up a ticket. So let's go back into that project. And we've went ahead and grabbed them all. And now it's blue. That means I've got changes on my end that I've made and I'm not sent up yet. And you can tell because you can just follow the, the little green box here. So I've done something to my scene. So let's come into here. Uh, so my scene file itself has been changed. And I think that's when I opened up my project. It went ahead and rebaked the, uh, I think it was the reflection map. I didn't actually see what it was when it was playing. But in theory, you could go in say, let's go ahead, we'll move this flag a bit. I'm just going to go ahead and save my scene and let's also go make a, a new script. Let's just call this script, um, delete me. All right, and take a look here. Now we have a few more green boxes here. And the script up here has a blue one, it looks like, on my screen. So it's showing you the things that need to be pushed. So to push things, again, all you have to do is come up to the top here, write your description. This is a test push for the video. It's telling me what two things have changed 
and you have the revert option and you can also see the diff. Let's go ahead and take a look at C diffs on the, the actual scene file. So here we go. I've got file merge on this computer. There's a whole bunch of different ones you can have and you can set it in the preferences, uh, which one on your system you want to use. So it's telling me I've got one difference and here it is, uh, this value for uh, local Z position. So this is where I went ahead and moved that flag. I assume I'm actually not, not really gonna delve too much into it. But yeah, I moved the flag and it's saying, hey, look, you moved the flag and this is the difference. Great, so let's go ahead, jump back in. I'm gonna go ahead and do the push, uh, the publish now, it runs off. Uh, if it was longer, you'd see, you know, obviously filling up as it goes. And it goes ahead and lets me know. And of course, if we go back to the collab history, we see that I did another push. Now, if you have one more, more than one tool to compare, we can actually come up here to preferences and go to external tools. And right here, the revision diff merge. You can go ahead, if you have a different one on your system, go ahead and select that. That's the one I have. That's the one I'm using on this computer. So we'll close that down. So what do I think of it? I actually really like this. Yes, again, it's not a substitution for any real backup, but I think it's a great way just to quickly work with someone on maybe maybe smaller projects or a subset of a project or in combination with a Git server. That's what I'm doing with this one here. I still have my Git server for my incremental backups. Uh, this does not support branching yet. It is something that they talked about in the video that they do want to implement. But for now, I still use that on my Git server, but just for being able to work on different scenes or different resources because you can't both work on, let's say the same scene. I'm like, okay, I want to put this flag here, move my lightning bolt, do the cars, this, that, and that. And someone else on the, on, on the other end is doing the exact same thing, you know, then also I hit collab and upload and then they get it and they're like, oh, look all these changes. Now I made all these changes. Now we got all these conflicts. So right now we're all working on different scenes and then we're going to go ahead and just well, work on different scripts at the same time as well. So it shouldn't be that bad. Again, a much better replacement than Dropbox, but still not quite Git. But only time will tell and we'll see how far it actually gets. But anyway, what do you actually think of this service? I actually really like it. I was a little skeptical about it at first, but after using it for a while, I actually really do like it. Let me know down below in the comments if you're actually gonna use this service. I know a lot of people have been waiting for something like this. But anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>